today on Hot Chocolate Chronicles. You mean to tell me that Big Mama ain't always gave up peppermint? Obituary still long. Yeah, <laughs> When did this man called God become real to you? Now, Jessica, are you willing to put your information out there? I am not. Okay, so... <laughs> Right away. It's coming from it. We're gonna give her some more hot chocolate because I don't All know right, what's so in there. But chocolate. it seems it seems to be oh in order to learn about my God. Regretfully I had to divorce everything I thought I knew. Too often I think we uh people think that God is like man. So you deal with how man loves you yes. and what they expect human. from you. Yeah, human. For me and the process that it took, I can still say it was worth it. Permission was given us in, to us in Genesis in, in, in 28. He gave us permission with purpose in 26, 27, and 28. And so what we're doing, we're still waiting for someone else's permission. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, uh, I'd like to thank you for being my guest this evening and welcome to the Hot Chocolate Chronicles. I can see that you've enjoyed yours. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we want to thank God for today. The Hot Chocolate Chronicles came to mind. It was an idea of mine because uh, I've been receiving a lot of questions in my DM in reference to uh, our live New Birth Community Amy Church is live and folks were saying, you know, Pastor, I think you're cool and I just have some questions that I want some answers to and I couldn't think of um, a better group of women to discuss these topics with. Um, I want you to be candid. I want you to be honest. Uh, if this thing spins off, I'd like to present more people with more questions because it's going to be real talk for real people and uh, real answers to real questions. So I want you to, you know, come from your field of study. I have Ann Taylor, Healthy Talk Heels, uh, Christina Peoples, Gerald Watt, and we have Jessica Stutes. I know all of us are coming from different backgrounds. Uh, I'm, my background is Methodism, and yours, Jessica? Uh, missionary Baptist. Christina? Baptist. Apple Apple. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we've got a good mixture up here. now. The reason we're doing it out in the cold uh, is because it is a, going to be a seasonal show and if the topics get too hot, the temperature will definitely cool us down. So I want to excuse you if I'm stepping on toes, if I use four, uh, you know, letter words or I say anything okay. that could, you know, it might be a booty call, but we don't know the pastors, you know. You were a woman before you were a pastor. Yeah, I was a woman before I was a pastor. Hey, Amen. And, and I'm a single woman. So what we want to do tonight is we want to give some honest answers to these young adults. You can reach me at Cam Speaks on Instagram. And if you DM me, your question could be one of the questions that pops up on the next Hot Chocolate Chronicles. That's and where can you be reached? Ann Taylor Speaker. Ann Taylor Speaker. That's Instagram? Yes. Okay. You? Um, at Gerald what? Well, at Gerald underscore Okay, Gerald, spell that for us. G E R O underscore what? what? Okay, okay. Now, Jessica, are you willing to put your information out there? I am not. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> right away. <laughs> Hell no lies. All right, <laughs> we're going to kick this thing right off. We want to talk about when did he become real and how he became real in your life. I think the question usually stems from a lot of college-age students, and I thank God for I have that listening audience. Um, but they want to know, when did God become real? Because uh, they're not getting the concept of his supernatural behavior in their lives. They keep hearing about this guy and hearing about this guy, but he doesn't seem to be real in their lives. So they have been begrudging going to church, and now that they're in college, the parents can't drag them off to church, but they seem to be lying to their parents and say, yeah, we're going to church on Sunday. Uh, in actuality, they're usually drunk on Saturday night or high on Saturday night because he doesn't seem to be real. So when did All he right. become real to you? When did this man called God become real to you? Well, for me, he didn't become real until there was a need. Um, until I had a problem or an issue or a set of issues that um, I had exhausted every other possibility of help. Uh, and so then it was a cry out, like a, oh, please help me, if you are who everybody has always told me that you were. Okay, um, so your experience is with, oh, what, what people said about him versus what you felt about him. Yes, yes. Um, so growing up in church, you hear about him, you sing songs about him, you read scripture about him. Uh, but 
I never had a personal encounter until I was in need. Yeah, I'm with Jessica. It was when there was an actual need. So for me growing up, and we've talked about this, I saw God in the same light that I saw Santa Claus. So it's like, okay, he gives us presents. I still get what I want and I can act out and do all of these things. That's kind of how I saw it with God. But with God, I realized that there are consequences. And when I'm doing whatever I feel like I want to do, I have to experience the consequences that come with it. And then in that, I get closer to him because of those consequences. I say it like this, that I've I met God through a series of unfortunate events. But when I think about it, I had to meet my God because I was trying to meet the God of other people's descriptions. Sure. And in order to learn about my God, it, regretfully I had to divorce everything I thought I knew. And that is everything everyone else hand fed. Once I did that and I was willing to experience God in my own way, I met my God. And so he, he's real. So it is true what I say, my God is not Big Mama's God. Oh, right. yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. You know, because we fed Big Mama's God. Yeah. And uh, because Big Mama was the patriarch of the family, and it seemed good to her, so it must be good enough for us. So is, is it feasible for young people to really have a relationship with God? I think, Christina, you're the youngest one at the table. You've been with me since you were how old? 16. 16. 16. So when did that actual feeling come that, you know, I need this God, the God that pastor's teaching about? When did that? For me, it was a long time. I mean... It's like you have to go through all these different stages as you're growing up, but you still retain the things that you hear people say about God, and you have that, you hold that, but it took time for me to apply it and try it for myself to really feel what people say that they've felt about God. So was it worth it? Yeah, it was worth it. I think it could have been done sooner. So to answer your question, it is feasible for younger people to experience God at a younger age, but for me and the process that it took, I can still say it was worth it. Wow, wow, wow. So so you're saying that young adults do, not saying that you did, young adults do what young adults do, uh, premarital sex, smoke a little weed, do a little drinking, do a little partying, but it was still worth it when you found it for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica, about what age? Oh man, I think I was probably about 20 before I, I really had a, a, an experience with him of my own. I think that like so many other things, uh, when you're growing up, you lean to those, to parents, to um, those older than you, you lean to their wisdom because they've experienced it. But I don't think enough time uh, teachers spend time trying to show us God based on the level where we are. They try to show us um, a God that's so much beyond where we are. So I, at six, for example, wouldn't have felt anything about a God that provides shelter because as, as a young adult, as a child, shelter just comes with my parents. So I think until you kind of explain it on a level of their need or whoever, you know, their, their need, their maturity level, their um, level of understanding when people can't grasp him. Wow. He is an attainable God though. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, he, he's yeah. an attainable God for all ages. And when I was growing up, it appeared that my sin would keep me away from him. Mm -hmm. When I actually grew up to learn, my sin drew me closer to him. Mm -hmm. Now that's some real stuff uh, right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Because it's important for us to realize that he wants us as we are. Yes. Uh, but they teach a God that wants to discipline us for where we are as opposed to draw us closer. The relationship disciplines us because then my consciousness is raised. Yeah. And so when my consciousness is raised, then I'm obliged to his goodness. Mm -hmm. And if we could get people to understand, young people especially, that you're not going to hell. You know, you got to go through God. Uh, assess him. He's obtainable. When you're dealing with the mental health part of this, what would you share with young adults or any adult in reference to seeking God in their issues? Um, much like my therapeutic approach, I'm experiential. The humanistic experience. Serving God is an experience that cannot be leveled off, phased off, you can't graduate out of it. If I would tell anybody anything, just have the experience with Christ because we maturate, we mature at different levels. 
and I grew up in an apostolic um, uh, persuasion, and you had to show forth your sameness or holiness. <laughs> if you will. Show it. It's impossible. It, it, it's not even possible. And so I was trying to be someone else instead of experiencing Christ. So I would just say experience Him in your own way. Believe it or not, I may be put out of the organization that I'm not in, but <laughs> you can really find God smoking, drinking, clubbing. Uh, you know, they made us. Wait a minute, you can find Him in the club? You can find Him anyway. Wait a minute, no, you don't mean you can find Him in the club. You mean you can be in the club drinking and smoking and find God in your heart? You can. Okay. I'm not saying that God is on the floor dancing. Okay. <laughs> okay. In Studio Clarity. 54. Clarity. <laughs> Clarity. Oh, no, 54. <laughs> but, I mean, some, ah, Lord, it's this kind of program. Some of the greatest prophets are on bar stools because the gift never leaves them. The church has estranged them. Hmm. But the gift is still there. And so I believe experiences lead us to Christ. Um, God is a God of nature, so I see him in the wind, I see him in the trees. Um, and so, now, if I'm out here intoxicated and I still see God in the tree... It's not that I'm high. I'm really seeing God. I'm experiencing him. I see his wonder in storms, in nature, in scripture. And the church has boxed God in that you can only experience him in four walls. It's an injustice. Yeah, I think I think I think that is the problem because you know, um, we're taught that you have to be a vessel of perfection for him to use you. And so you you're not a vessel of perfection if you're drinking. Or so that couldn't possibly be God because So this what couldn't be Kahlua. This couldn't be Kahlua. It can't be Kahlua. It can't keep you warm, you know. That uh, you can't, you know, that's not possible. So I think the performance piece, you know, they teach us that God, uh, his involvement with you is based on your performance. Yeah, but you can't run fast enough for him to love you anymore. No. You can't jump a hurdle high enough for him to love you anymore. God's love, nothing can separate us from it, first of all. And God's love is the warmest thing that I've ever felt, you know? And it wasn't because I was swinging from chandeliers having mad sex with him, you know? It's because he loved me first. And and, and a man that loves you first and uh, unconditionally... And we're still seeking something else. And we're giving our bodies to something that doesn't guarantee that. But the word guarantees his unconditional love. Well, love had to be redefined for us as a culture, as a people. Because we in, in the 60s, we're just barely out of um, formalized institution called slavery. And then we go into the church and we find Christ. We have jobs. We're now older and building. So when we look at love, it has... We've only seen love through correction. And so when, when I came into the church, they were preaching about be saved so that you don't go to hell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was nothing about love. Mm-hmm. And so it's only until now that once I'm not going to hell, how can I experience God? And we had to redefine, mm, this is good, we had to redefine love because we didn't know what it was. And the whole Bible is hinged on the word love in three Love God, yourself, and others. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so we missed that piece as God is the Father because we had homes where we didn't have fathers. And so as we find out what love is, then we can, and I mean learn love through God. You when know, we find out that He's loving us, it, it changes your whole world. Because we don't believe it once we find it out, though. And we don't believe it because of the uh, poor teachings of pulpits and pulpiteers. Yeah, because when you focus on the word love, I feel like most churches focus on judgment versus love so any little thing you do whether you're having sex you're a homosexual all of those things that's the focus versus let me just love this person and let them feel God through the love that I'm showing them Mm -hmm. but I would want that for for everyone yeah I would too but too often I think we um, people think that God is like man so you deal with how man loves you yes. and what they expect human. from you. Yeah, human. What they expect from you in order for you to receive their love. Mm-hmm. And we often want to make it seem as if God is the same yes. when he's not. Yes. So most people have experienced a flesh of love. Yes. But they haven't experienced the love from God. Yeah, but you know, God, the entity of his love is... It's got to be known. You've got to be convicted in it. Because I said before, even in my sin, I knew he was real. 
I mean, I was doing it out of both petty legs and an unmarried woman of God and, and still knew God was real, but the correction of it was his love and not his discipline. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. I, I, he stuck with me. Wow. He waited for me. Wow. Yeah. I love him. He waited for me. He <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and I think to myself, I, I, I like that. I like that. I'm forever obliged. I would tell my 17 year old self that maybe next time Hot Chocolate Chronicles would be in my living room because it's a little chilly out here. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, let me know. Let me think. Oh, I would tell my 17 year old self not to, not to be afraid to live life. Um, I think that uh, for me, I spent a lot of time being afraid of what could be if I. Mm -hmm. And so um, I, I, I lived in a place of waiting and uh, in between, should I, should I not, will I, won't I. Like, so so in so, that, did God dis di disappoint you? Were you disappointed when you? Oh, absolutely. Because I, I wait a minute, that's blasphemy. They could come to show up. They could come to show up. You were disappointed. Well, what it was. I'm telling you what I felt. What did you feel, sis? <laughs> I felt like if I I was supposed to do some things a certain way, with all the church mothers and everybody saying how you're supposed to do it, and when you do it, it's going to guarantee you this. And I didn't get my guarantee. Yeah. And so I was Nobody like, well, well, my pal, I did it like you told me to do, it, God. So do you feel that you missed some experiences because you were doing it like you thought it was supposed to be done? Uh, yes, but you know, life is still uh, ever okay. moving. Okay. I mean, we we this we time. we're not dead yet. Okay. So, yeah. So um, <laughs> there is still time. Yeah. You know, but um, I can really appreciate the fact that uh, I was able to release my disappointment when I got into His Word, and I learned uh, God didn't say that. The people said that. Release the disappointment. Yeah. That's good. Huh? Because until then, I was so angry with him for what I felt like he didn't give me um, that I couldn't praise him. And he deserves more than that. Yeah, because, you know, that's when the devil begins to shut your mouth. Mm -hmm. And if the devil shuts your mouth, we have nowhere to go. Because he's he, he's worthy of the praise. Yes, he is. I mean, even in, in our sins and our sickness, he's still worthy of the mm -hmm. praise. And... He, you were disappointed and you shut down praise oh, yeah. and you found him again. Mm -hmm. How long did it take? How, how long did you stop praising him in my church on the praise? How long mm. did I have to tell you, Jessica, release that? Really? How long did I have to say? How long was I on your back? How long did that last? Um, I think it was a good solid eight or nine months. Yeah, me too. But I see, think it was. I have somewhat <laughs> perfected the art of hiding. Uh, and perception. So I don't think many people knew because uh, I kept going, you know, I kept mm -hmm. moving, you know, fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew. I felt, of course, my spiritual leader knew because she would you know, tell me frequently. Yeah, it, it took me a while, but he was still there and the still same God that reassured me and um, reassured his promises, not what man said. So, so did you did you fall back in after you got it, or it took a while to creep back in there? Into praise? Mm -hmm. Oh, I jumped right back in because it's not something that I did not want to do. It's something that I purposely restricted wow. because I was upset. So you were pouting. I was pouting. You were mad at Called God. Holding. Oh holding yeah. Holding of love. Yeah. 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 It happens to you know things. we. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't work with God like okay. it may work with a human. Yes. You know, so you held back your love. Good God Almighty, Christina. What would you tell your seventeen-year-old self? That he sees you because for so many years I felt invisible and I was seeking validation, but not realizing the only one I need the validation from is him, and he sees me. So I'm not. I don't have to feel like worry about if other people can see me, if other people notice me, what other people have to say about me. That all comes from him. Wow. wow, what would you tell your 70 year old self? Sort of segue off of what Christina said. I would say, say it in a song I can't sing. It's not the song. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh, don't yeah. sing it. Don't it tonight. says, Don't go changing. Uh, trying to please to me. To try to please me. I love you just the way you are. If I can mm. tell that girl that, wow, she would have been a lot further. So now I have to find that at 40. God loved me just uh, all of my quirks, all of my differences. My standout things, he loved me just like that. 
if I only knew then what I know now. Yeah. You know, the fact that we don't know, they didn't want to tell us because Ooh. they did not want us to know. They purposely did not want to know. They purposely did not want to know. Some people knew. They knew. Some people knew. Some people knew. Why? Because it's another form of restraining slavery. You know, so we've got to be released from our people as well as from other institutions. The slave now wants to become the master. That's right. You know, because just like the, the, the bully the, becomes the bully. Yeah. And so what happens here, now we have a church full of uh, Stepford Wives, so mm. to speak. As long as you do what's required, nobody really, really cares about what you feel. Mm. And when I was called to the ministry, I remember... It, it, I didn't accept it. I had had it since I was 16. I didn't accept it till I was 30. And I accepted, accepted it under the condition when he took my mom. Mm. He, he called her to heaven. And I thought, can't nobody love me like this woman. I, I've got to answer the call. And I told him, I said, if I do this, like, like you had a choice. Like I had a choice. <laughs> I, I've done my work. If I do this, God, allow me to be the pastor that I needed when I was 17. Whoa. It allow me to, to talk to those in, in a manner and reach them right w where they are as opposed to showing them my education. Allow me to, to get down. Allow me to go to places where they would think pastors wouldn't attend. Allow me to teach them and not preach to them. And allow me to tell them that God is love. Now, that God is love piece took me a long time. Because, mm. you know, I was clicky like everybody else. I had my little, ooh, that's nasty, that nasty. Ooh, that's nasty. Mm -hmm. You know, but I had to work. And then what did I do? I taught y'all. That ain't, you got to let God handle that. What? My job is not to save a soul. Ooh. That's the key. Yeah. He yeah. saves. Yeah. Jesus saves. That's that what the word says? Yeah. Jesus saves. My job is to just teach the word where they can get an understanding that they might want to seek this Jesus that I speak about. So, you know, it, it is not just a pastor's job to draw folk in. You know, we've got to live by, you know, the means in which he's the goodness that he gave us. And so when I released myself of that burden, and it was a burden. Yeah. You know, it was a burden. I, I, should, I tell, man's burden. Should, should I tell you what you do or you just want to talk about Healthy Talk Hills? Okay, <laughs> Healthy Talk Hills. <laughs> well, let me say, Pastor, you have definitely been that kind of pastor. I've never you. met one like you, and I don't know if I ever meet another one. Hey, I'm uh, the <laughs> But you, you certainly have been that um, show them type mm -hmm. of pastor. Well, well, you know, I needed that, and I still need it to, to this day. I think it's so important that we have relationship mm -hmm. ver versus religion. Because if you want, to, want, want me to tell you something? He did not die on the cross for religion. So I don't care what the discipline that you use or what order or structure that you have in your church. That's not why he died. He died for love. Because it was my sins that he bore on yeah. that cross. Who could love me like that? What manner of man is this is what is asked. What manner of man is this? And, and, and I still cannot answer that except the entity of love. He, his love in totality. He trusted me with everything that he created and expected of me what I have not yet to show him. I've got some work to do. And topics like this, talking about where we were, how we discovered uh, Christ and when he became real to us, needs to be talked about. And as a pastor of a church, I want you to know, and I want your families to know and your friends to know, anybody who's listening, that God is love. Mm -hmm. And he loves you, you know, even in your sin. Period. 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 <laughs> Christina, tell me how that works. Tell me how that works with, with Gerald Wood. What do you try to do with your blog? What are you trying to do? I want people to see aging in a positive light because I feel like so many people tread getting older. So many people speak negatively about it. So I'm always working to shift that and let people see that it's all in what you make it out to be. So you can make it positive or negative. Because if I'm not getting older, I'm dead. Right. That's, right. Right. That's, the option. Option. Right. That's, That's the only option. That's the only option. So if I start thinking positively now, this, this thing doesn't have to be drudgery. Right. But I, the word also tells me that there's certain things that doesn't happen to me just because I'm older. You know, we've got to stop looking to lose our eyesight and lose Absolutely. our teeth and lose our hair. It doesn't have to be that way. No. It doesn't have to be that way. So if I come in with a positive attitude, and that's where the pulpiteers are so important and the pastors are so important, because guess where seniors flock to the church? Yeah. 
We can't get the young folk in there like that, but the seniors flock to the church. You know, they done gave all their goods to the community. Now they flock into the church on walkers with tennis balls. You know what I'm saying? And so with tennis balls. And so I'm suggesting, I'm suggesting that we begin here. I'll support you in that wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. And in the mental health status, what would you say? Um, healthy talk heals. Conversations like this are so important. It heals the spirit, the wounded soul. People are, are wounded in their spirits. And they're at the restaurants, they're on vacation, they're driving fine cars, but their spirits are broken. So the more we talk about this, the more we learn and know, because we are a culture, and most cultures are, tradition is passed down, is learned. So imagine if we become healthy, and we pass that down to our children and they to their children, I think we'll be healed as a, as a really a globe. Yeah. So Healthy Talk does heal. I, uh, my platform discusses, Healthy Talk Heals, discusses things that we don't want to talk about. For instance, one of my roles was um, know your role, study your role. If you're going to be crazy, study that role. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Learn your part <laughs> and know what um, a Effects come from it. We're gonna give her some more hot chocolate because I don't right, know what's so in there. But chocolate. it seems it seems to be oh she's sucking that up. All know right. your role, know your role, <laughs> know your role. Know so your role. just know your lines, play it to the you know, to the heel and um do, whatever you do, do it in the greatest perfection. Um so I think just discussing things that were hidden and buried, mm. I think we should just talk about it because healthy talk does heal. So you mean to tell me that Big Mama ain't always gave up peppermint? No, she didn't. She, Big she Mama didn't. gave up other things too? Maybe peppermint stick. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so Big Mama didn't only give out butterscotch disc. No, she didn't. No. She was giving other things out. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait on the low. Ain't nobody out here with us. So, have you ever, did you ever realize that, you know, Big Mama was a skis? Come on now. What, I, why are, why are all your cousins seven different complexions? <laughs> you, you know, you go to a family funeral and you right. look around like it's the like United a Nations. Of, a lot of you got like Hindu, in, okay, you got, mm -hmm. you got, you, you got. You a lot of things in the obituary. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Obituary still at all. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you like, wait, what? <laughs> Oh my God! Oh, right. <laughs> and those good old lifelong friends. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Ooh. 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 Hey guys, real. hey guys, you all are leaving the top. No, 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 no. You, you are right. leaving the top. That's experience. The, 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 yeah. the, 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 the experience. The hot chocolate chronicles here. The yeah. hot chocolate chronicles. You know, and, but these are the people that are in the churches. You know, these are the people that are lying to us in churches that we revere. You know, and they don't mean to lie, no. but they just lie. So they lie. Fear. A lot of times, what they do is make a theology out of a philosophy. Oh, you can't do that. You oh, can't make a theology oh, out of philosophy. Speak on that. Oh, yeah. Speak yeah. about it. What is no, it? they they try to make it about God. What you believe, your philosophy of life, marriage, finances is yours. But don't try to make it a theology. Uh, uh, how I relate to God based upon your life experience. And I think that's what they do. They get to an age where they feel they can influence people younger than them, and they make it a theology. And and we'll only tell half the story. Oh my God! We'll only tell half the story because you're trying to, uh, on some level, uh, preserve your, your dignity. You think mm -hmm. people are seeing and present I people. I don't know what people think that if I tell you the truth, you'll no longer respect me, yeah. or you're no longer listen Come on, to not what because I'm it's true. You. It's true though. It's but that doesn't, true. but you try to message once that good advice is good advice. Yeah. Even if the wino on the corner is telling you you shouldn't drink with a bottle in his hand, perhaps you should listen to him because yeah. he's on the corner with he's a bottle in his you. hand. He's so, showing Right. So it doesn't always have to come from a place of privilege or a place of position. But that is if, that is what we're taught though. It that is. is that that is that key is. word that's been misconstrued. Permission was given us in, to us in Genesis in, in, in 28. He gave us permission with purpose in 26, 27, and 28. And so what we're doing, we're still waiting for someone else's permission. Mm, As opposed, it. we have the authority already. You don't need it. So I don't need anybody else's permission to live out loud. Mm -hmm. I can just do this thing, but I've got to be responsible enough to know what's going on. But you know, when we learn these things about our loved ones, uh, that they think that they cannot share, it is because, Traditionally, our people were not taught to share that type of thing. 
you know. And so, in the culture in which we live, in the women that are sitting around this table, it is the, the hey, what goes on in here stays, stays in here. here, you know. And so, we were supposed to look up away without feeling a certain way. And when you begin to mask that kind of pain, it grows up in you through deterioration, and you never get to really live out loud, Very you know. True. And so. Uh, we send our kids off to school to get an education, but they don't know what to do with the money that they mm. make. So they immediately file bankruptcy. You know, the first credit card, we're not meant to handle money. We just meant to get it. You know, I mean, we just have no idea what to do with the life that God has given us. I got my first credit card, the first of many, in student hall. The student freshman hall. year. Oh, yeah. 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 Was that refrigerator? That was I get a refrigerator. refrigerator. You know, I, I would say I would get the for a We all got a t-shirt. We didn't get refrigerators. No, no, we, that's where they got you. They got the Macy's, the Macy May Company credit card right next to the little guy that was renting those refrigerators. See, I'm old. We didn't buy the refrigerator. We rented the little refrigerator, you know? And so you got the first credit card with $300 on it and the refrigerator all in the same hallway. I'm talking about you grow there. You grown right there and See, not taught what to do with it. Now, not to go off topic, but I have a problem with the universities for that. Okay. Because you, you're setting us up almost in a predatory fashion to allow these credit card companies to sit on your on your campus knowing that you have a vulnerable population. But that's, mm, that's a whole nother story. I'm thinking we can have some more problems. We got a lot of stories to tell. Lot to and share. there are a lot of guests that want to sit at this table. Uh, if the opportunity arises. Would you hot chocolate with me again? Sure. You hot chocolate with me again? Okay, I'm concerned it wasn't Christina's cup. It is hot chocolate. It is hot chocolate. You're like, give me some more of that. No. I want to know what's in your tummy. Okay. So we we thank you so much for your time. I hope I hope you'll hot chocolate with me again. There's so many other subject matters, and and, and I've got other people who are going to be on. And I just want you all to know that it's a pleasure to be with you all uh, out here in the cold, but this is the purpose of the hot chocolate. So these women have agreed to hot chocolate with me again. Stay tuned. The hot chocolate hot chocolate. 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 Hot chocolate.